Before we get started, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications whenever we share a video. This video is sponsored by OWC. NVIDIA's GeForce Now gaming service just recently came out of beta and it's officially available to anyone who wants to play games that either might not be available to play natively on the Mac or they're too GPU and CPU intensive that their machines might not be able to handle it. The only main requirement here is really just a good internet connection. So for this video, I tested out the free version of the gaming service and I did this using a few different Macs to see if the performance of the specific Mac really doesn't matter. Obviously, before you can do any gaming at all, you'll need to sign up for the service on NVIDIA's website. And in addition to the free version, there's also a paid founders version. The free version offers standard access and you can only play for one hour during a single session. Now for $4.99 a month for 12 months, the limited time founders version can give you priority access, extended session lengths, RTX on, and for the first 90 days, the service will actually be free. Once I downloaded the app and got everything up and running, I went browsing through the game library. Now it is worth noting that in order to play these games, you actually have to own them in some way, shape or form. So for example, some of these titles from Epic Games will allow users to sign into whatever platform they already own the game on, whether it's Xbox, PS4, even Nintendo Switch, or if you have it in a Steam account, for example, for other games, even not Epic Games, but whatever, you have to own the game in some way, shape or form. One of the negatives about the service right now, in my opinion, is the game selection is kind of, uh, it's not that great. It, when the service was initially launched in beta nearly three years ago, a lot of these titles might have felt new and exciting, but for the most part, all of these games are at least a couple of years old. But you can play games like Fortnite, League of Legends, Witcher 3, and Destiny 2, which is one of the only free games available that I was familiar with, and so I decided to test this out using this game. With NVIDIA's GeForce Now, I've probably already said this, but it's stressed that internet connection is important. You'll actually go through a connection test and it'll tell you, you know, how you're gonna run that game. And at my office here, we have about 400 megabits per second download speeds. So you would think hearing that, that's pretty good. But when I got the game up and running on Wi-Fi on my 2016 12 inch MacBook, the game would only output at 30 frames per second max, running at a resolution of 1200 by 800. Obviously, this led to some pretty horrific gameplay. And you know, everything was incredibly choppy, blurry, laggy, all the things and words that you would describe uh, bad gameplay, that's what I got. I started to wonder if the performance of the machine might really play into this a little bit. And so I moved over to my iMac Pro and I was using Wi-Fi and things were just as bad. So I found an ethernet cable, plugged it into my iMac Pro, ran a quick speed test just to see exactly how much I was getting to my machine. And I was actually getting well over 400 megabits per second that I'm paying for, so that was always nice. So I rebooted the service, launched the game again, and just like that, with a very good internet connection and being hardwired in, I was able to play Destiny 2 flawlessly. I noticed no lag or drop frames and was playing at a much higher resolution and frame rate than before. It really did feel as if we were playing the game on some high-end gaming PC. So I wanted to go back to my 12 inch MacBook and see if it's possible to game on a machine that's definitely not advertised as a gaming you know, computer at all. And really it's four years old and it's really not that powerful when you look at some of the other machines that I have. So I found a dongle, I ethernet cable, I plugged it in and I tried to get everything up and running just like I did on my iMac Pro. And what do you know, everything worked flawlessly too. Destiny 2 ran just as well as it did on my iMac Pro when that was hardwired. So yes, gaming on a 12 inch MacBook from 2016 is definitely possible with the NVIDIA GeForce Now service and of course a really good stable internet connection. So as for the gaming service itself and whether or not you should try it, well of course you should try it, it's free. And if you already own some of those games, whether it's on Steam or you know on another uh, gaming console and you have the games that are offered, you should totally try it out. Now the one hour gameplay you know, per session might not be worth it. So for $4.99, if you don't have a high-end gaming PC, you have a Mac, you want a game on it like you would a high-end gaming PC, this really does work. Again, assuming you have really good ethernet you know, plugged in and your internet connection overall is good. So go ahead and let us know in the comment section down below what you think 
of NVIDIA's GeForce Now. Have you tried it out? Do you like it? Would love to know your thoughts. Before we end today's video, I do want to give you more information about today's sponsor, OWC. OWC offers a wide range of products for your Mac, like internal hard drives, SSDs, memory, Thunderbolt 3 docks, and much more. For mass storage options, this Thunder Bay 4 Mini packs a ton of storage into a desktop style device with four 2.5 inch drive bays capable of holding up to 16 terabytes of data and offers pro grade transfer speeds up to 1,556 megabits per second. There are also two Thunderbolt 3 ports on the back capable of daisy chaining five additional Thunderbolt devices and it runs nearly silent, like completely silent. This thing is surprisingly very quiet. This is the perfect option for you editors out there who want to store a ton of your raw footage and files on the Thunder Bay Mini 4 and maybe edit off of an external SSD or your built-in SSD. But I do think the Thunderbolt speeds that this thing offers is honestly capable of having some videos edit off of too. I highly recommend checking it out by clicking the link in the description for more information. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.